We believe that this measure is severe and it's not the best way forward. And it's also undermining efforts across the region uh, to devise uh, a response that is coherent and collective um, to, to deal with, with the, the movement of people uh, from especially the north of Central America towards the U.S. The U.S. implemented a new immigration rule this week that human rights groups say contravenes international law. And that's raising the question here at home. Should Canada now suspend its safe third country agreement with the U.S.? The Trump administration's new rule applies to migrants at the U.S. southern border. Let's say a migrant arrives from Honduras through Mexico and they're seeking asylum in the U.S. That person will not be considered since they've traveled through another country to get there. Instead, the U.S. government says they should seek asylum in the first country they enter after they leave home. Most migrants arriving at the border come from Central America, meaning hundreds of thousands of them will be ineligible now for asylum. As a result, Amnesty International is calling on Canada to immediately suspend the Safe Third Country Agreement. The STCA is a treaty struck between the U.S. and Canada back in 2002. It says that any refugee who attempts to cross at an official border crossing must be turned back to make their claim in the first country they entered, as long as that country is quote-unquote safe. Amnesty International argues with the implementation of this policy, there is no single basis upon which the STCA can in any way be defended. The U.S. is choosing, the organization goes on to say, to implement a measure that constitutes an automatic bar to refugee protection for a wide sweeping category of claimants. So is the U.S. violating its agreement with Canada? Should Canada suspend it in light of the new rules? Audrey Macklin is professor and chair in human rights law at the University of Toronto. She joins us now from Toronto via FaceTime. Hi, Professor Macklin. Nice to see you again. Thank you. In your assessment, given the change of rules in the United States around asylum seekers, can this country continue to designate the U.S. as a safe one in that context? No, I don't believe that Canada uh, can designate the United States as a safe country for refugee claimants. Um, there have been several initiatives taken by the current U.S. administration that have eroded the safety of the United States, but perhaps the most dramatic and pernicious is the recent rule that would say anybody who passed through another country en route to the United States to claim asylum is ineligible for asylum. This is a dramatic and extreme measure that will deny refugee protection to anybody who has passed through another country, basically anybody who isn't coming directly from Mexico. And how does that make, to use a layman's term, the U.S. unsafe then, in the context at least of the STCA, for example? The Safe Third Country Agreement allows Canada to uh, return to the United States refugee claimants who have come through the United States en route to Canada on the grounds that they can receive um, a fair refugee determination process in the United States. If the United States is no longer allowing people to seek refugee protection there, and indeed if it is caging children, uh, which is a form of extreme abuse, if it is uh, returning people to Mexico, a country that is itself not safe, then Canada is in breach of its own legal requirements because it is sending people back to a country that isn't safe and that may expose those people to persecution. Can you expand on those legal requirements? Is it, do is it domestic law that it's breaching or is it our international obligations or both? The Safe Third Country Agreement uh, stipulates that both Canada and the United States have to be countries that it is safe for people to seek refugee protection in. And that requires that each state operate a refugee determination process that fulfills their respective international legal obligations. Canada and the United States are both signatories to the UN Refugee Convention. Under that convention, people who come to your border seeking refugee protection must not be sent back to a country where they face a well-founded fear of persecution. Under the new US rule, people who come from, for example, Honduras, pass through Mexico en route to the United States and ask for refugee protection in the United States will be ineligible and they will be returned to Honduras, the country where they fear persecution without any chance to determine whether they are in fact at risk of persecution there. From so, your, oh, sorry, pardon me, go ahead. 
That means that the United States has adopted a law that allows it to send people back to countries where they may face a well-founded fear of persecution with no chance to make out their refugee claim. From your perspective, does that mean the Canadian government should suspend the Safe Third Country Agreement? Yes. Under the Safe Third Country Agreement, either country is permitted to suspend the Safe Third Country Agreement for six months, simply by declaring its intention to do so, or on one year's notice to cancel the agreement. So it's important to know that the Safe Third Country Agreement, in its terms, contemplates the possibility that either country might want to suspend the agreement if, for example, they have reason to be concerned that the other country is not or is no longer a safe country for refugees to seek and obtain protection. We reached out to the federal government on this issue to see where they stood. The UNHCR has also raised concerns about these changes in the United States and its potential impact on the STCA. Uh, A spokesperson for um, uh, Minister of Border Security, Bill Blair, told us that they have consulted and, and discussed those concerns with the UNHCR, but that the U.S. remains, quote, a safe country governed by the rule of law and by the branches of the executive, legislative and judiciary, while also subscribing to international conventions on refugees And on torture, the statement went on to say that the Safe Third Country Agreement is not affected by the new U.S. policy. Your reaction? Well, let me just say that the UNHCR itself says this measure is severe and is not in line with international obligations. So, in fact, the UNHCR takes the view that the United States is not in compliance with its international obligations under the Refugee Convention. I don't know on what basis Canada is coming to a different conclusion. What's at stake, do you think, right now, if Canada does not uh, change its policy direction on this? Lives. Lives are at stake. People who have a valid fear of being persecuted, killed, denied their liberty, are going to be denied the protection that the UN Refugee Convention guarantees them, and to which the United States voluntarily signed, as did Canada. If Canada sends people back to persecution, it's in violation of the Refugee Convention. If Canada sends people to a country that it knows will send people back to face persecution, it also violates its international obligations, in addition to the United States violating its international obligations under the Refugee Convention. The UNHCR has expressed all the concerns that you mentioned, and very specifically so. It has not yet responded to our requests if it, if it specifically will revoke the designation of, uh, safe, as a sa- of the U.S. as a safe third country. If it does so, does that put even more pressure on Canada? Like, is there any way for the federal government to avoid doing the same if the UNHCR initiates that? The UNHCR doesn't have the job of designating any particular country as a safe country for refugees. That is a term of art under the Safe Third Country Agreement. It is Canada that designates the United States as safe for purposes of the STCA, just as the United States designates Canada as safe for purposes of that same agreement. It is up to Canada, more specifically Cabinet, to make that designation. Under that designation, um, the criteria under the Immigration Refugee Protection Act are not only that the United States is a signatory to international conventions like the Refugee Convention, and certainly not only that it is generally governed by the rule of law or has an elected democracy or so on. It's what is happening on the ground that matters, what the actual laws, policies, and frontline practices are. And that's what counts. And as far as I can tell, the response by Minister Blair hasn't addressed that dimension of it. It is not. It, it is meaningless to say that the United States is a signatory to the Refugee Convention if, in practice, it is flouting it. Let me just rephrase then. If, if Forget about the formalities. If the UNHCR does specifically come out and say that the U.S. should not be recognized as a, as a safe third country, d- is that a, a mechanism by which the pressure would increase on the federal government in this country? I think so. But let me reiterate that the UNHCR has said, and I'm quoting from their press release, the United States is not in line with international obligations. Okay, thank you. That's very a much. way of saying it's not safe. Understood. Thank you, Professor Macklin. Appreciate your time today. That's Audrey Macklin, Professor and Chair in Human Rights Law at the University of Toronto. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.